Ooh, it's spooky in here today. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Crew Trime? Crew Trime? What was that? Crew Trime? Happy Halloween! My name is Sarah, and what I do around here is tell you a terrible story to ruin your day. And put on my makeup while I do it. So if that sounds like a fun combination, you're in the right place. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification, and then you will get an alert every time I upload a terrible story. So today's story is about one of the spookiest American writers. It's a great choice for a Halloween themed story. Working with some spooky background situations today. <laughs> so this guy is like the OG original goth. Oh, that's what that stands for? <laughs> it does today. Well, what you might not know and what I didn't know is that he died under mysterious circumstances. This is the story of Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, so I know it's not exactly Halloween today, but this is as close as we're gonna get. We're in full Halloween spirit. Look at my shirt too, look at this. Beetlejuice. You know, Beetlejuice is my favorite. I'm kind of working the spooky goth Burton-esque vibes today. Tim Burton, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know why I kind of pair up Tim Burton style things and Edgar Allan Poe. Does anybody else do that? Anyways, that's what we're doing today. I think I'm gonna put on a wig today. Why not? So let me get my, let me get my hairs together. Hold please. Ah! Hair is pulled back, probably unnecessary, but here we are. <laughs> okay, one more thing. I don't really talk about the makeup as I'm applying it, but if you're interested to see what I use <laughs> today in this video, I will link everything that's still available down in the description box. Um, okay, so let's get started. Edgar Poe was born on January 19th, 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts to a pair of actors, David and Eliza Poe. He also had an older brother named William and a younger sister named Rosalie, middle child man. As I mentioned, Elizabeth and David were actors and they traveled up and down the East Coast performing, which didn't give those three children a very stable home. When Edgar was about one years old, years, one year old, his father ditched the family, leaving Eliza a single mom. Unfortunately, about a year after that, Elizabeth died of consumption, aka tuberculosis. So tuberculosis came up in another story earlier this month. It's an infectious lung disease, and it was just really bad in the early 19th century. Bad. So having no parents, the Poe children were all alone, essentially orphaned. Edgar was placed in the home of Francis and John John Allen on their tobacco farm in Richmond, Virginia. So Edgar eventually took the middle name Allen from the Allen family, although he was never officially adopted by them. Edgar was said to have a good relationship with Francis, but not so much with John. So John was really hot and cold with Edgar, you know, and that didn't make things stable or nice in the home. Nevertheless, Edgar did stay with the Allen family until uh, into adulthood when he left to go to the University of Virginia. So I found that there's quite a lot of conflicting information when it comes to Edgar Allan Poe versions of stories. Some people report that John Allen gave Edgar all the money he needed for room and board and books and all that stuff, but Edgar spent it on booze and gambling, so John cut him off. Other people say that John didn't help him at all with money for school. Either way, Edgar was only in school for about a year before he dropped out, which caused an even bigger rift with John. So Edgar has left UVA and he decided to enlist in the United States Army. So in May of 1827, he did just that, but he did so under an alias, Edgar A. Perry. By the way, I forgot to mention that the Allen family that essentially raised Edgar were very wealthy. They had a tobacco farm and John Allen was into trading goods and all kinds of things. Okay, so Edgar A. Perry enlisted in the army and he claimed to be 22 years old even though he was only 18. Some people say that him using that alias really confirms the fact that he had gambling troubles and things because somebody wouldn't need to use an alias unless they were running from something. It was also during his early days in the army that his first literature pieces were published. The first one was called Tamerlane and Other Poems, written under the alias a Bostonian. So after Edgar published Tamerlane and Other Poems, um, no one cared. 
<laughs> no one cared. It was not successful at all. It gained no attention, no interest, but he did keep trying. Meanwhile, in the army, Edgar was doing fairly well. You know, he rose pretty quickly up through the ranks and achieved the rank of sergeant major after only three years. Maybe it was only Maybe it was only two years? Either way, pretty impressive. He had only signed a five-year commitment, and in about year three, he was kinda over it, sort of. He wanted to go to West Point. West Point is the United States Military Academy in New York. According to records, Edgar finally revealed his true identity, his real name, in order to be released from his enlistment contract. His commanding officer told him that the only way that he would authorize this was if Edgar made amends with his foster father, John. He did. He reached out, and at first, John straight up ignored him. But as the months went on, Francis... John's wife fell ill and eventually died. So apparently softened by that, John eventually changed his mind and he and Edgar made a truce. Well, on July 1st, 1830, Edgar Allan Poe did go to West Point. Now, while he was gone, John Allen remarried and Edgar was so salty about it, they ended up falling out altogether. Remember, he was really close to Francis, so he just was really hurt by this, I guess. Well, all of this drama in his life just really got to Edgar and he was ready to bail on West Point. Let's see if I can do this nose right this time. The last time I contoured my nose, it was not good. <laughs> I think the lights are stronger on one side in here. That's the problem. Anyways, okay, so Edgar wanted out of West Point. So how do you do that? Well, he started messing up on purpose, shirking, malingering. On February 8th of 1831, Edgar Allan Poe was tried at West Point for gross neglect of duty and disobedience of orders for refusing to follow standard rules and regulations. Part of his little master plan was to plead not guilty, but then not mount any defense at all. So he knew that he'd be found guilty and discharged. It worked. Also that same year, he released a volume of poems titled Poems, real creative. Well, it was partially financed by the men he had served with in the army who had donated money toward the cause. Some of them gave him like upwards of 75 cents each, and that raised a total of $170, which in today money is like $6,000. So after West Point, Edgar moved to Baltimore, Maryland to live with his grandma, Elizabeth, also Aunt Maria and Maria's children, Henry and Virginia his cousins. They lived pretty modestly on a pension check that Elizabeth was getting every month from the state. But despite that, his family was very supportive of his literary dreams, which was strange for Edgar because that had been the source of many of his problems between he and his dad, John. In 1835, Edgar moved back to Richmond, Virginia to take a job at a newspaper called the Southern Literary Messenger. And this is where he started writing as a literary critic and making money doing it for the first time. Once he had a little bit of money in his pocket, he sent back to Baltimore for his Aunt Maria and cousin Virginia to come to Richmond to move in with him. His grandmother Maria and cousin Henry had died by this point. So on May 16th, 1836, the now 27 year old Edgar married his cousin Virginia. She was 13 years old. Uh, first, first cousins. I mean, okay, it was like the mid 1800s and marrying cousins was considered okay back then, but like. Zadris dorot unumakas, sia presiris ohis, sagon unatsahas. Also, no. Gross. That's some Targaryen dragon tail baby shit waiting to happen. Anyway, shortly after they were married, Edgar was working as a literary critic and traveling between Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York City. Then in January of 1845, he published a narrative poem called The Raven. It was an instant success. Still also wildly popular with seventh grade English class. I'm pretty sure when I was in middle school and we were reading The Raven that they made us memorize parts of it. Anybody else? Quoth the Raven. Eat my shorts. Bart, stop it. He says never more. So Edgar Allan Poe was officially a BFD. That means a big fucking deal. 
He was invited to clubs and dinners, you know, people knew who he was. But since he had already taken a monetary advance on the publication and sold the rights for $9, he essentially made nothing off of that poem. Can you believe that? Anyways, the momentum that he'd built on the poem unfortunately did not last, and there was no money coming in from it. In May of 1846, Edgar and Virginia moved to a rural cottage in the Bronx, New York. Is the Bronx rural? I'm gonna go with no, it's not. Not anymore. Tragedy then struck the next year when Edgar's beloved Virginia fell ill with, you guessed it, tuberculosis. They really gotta find a cure for that. Well, Edgar was devastated with this and he started drinking heavily at that time. On January 30th, 1847, Virginia Poe died. She was only 24 years old. On her deathbed, Virginia asked her mom, Maria, to look after Eddie. That's adorable. Did you guys know that he went by Eddie sometimes? Well, after Virginia's death, Edgar, although unstable and drunk, was determined to marry again. Some say to marry up. Edgar started chasing after a fellow writer and widow who lived in Newport, Rhode Island, pestering her nonstop to marry him. Why are you so obsessed with me? That, no surprise, fell apart. After that, Edgar moved on to a new relationship with an old friend from growing up named Sarah Royster Shelton. She was also a widow. I mean, her husband probably died of tuberculosis. Just a guess. Well, she was a widow, like I mentioned, and she actually stood to lose three quarters of her inheritance if she remarried. I guess that was the terms of that deal. But I guess she was seriously considering it. Although she and Edgar never got to marry. Over the years, Edgar Allan Poe wrote many more poems and short stories such as Annabelle Lee and The Telltale Heart and Murders in the Rue Morgue. That one is widely considered to be the first, first ever detective fiction. Well, despite all that, Edgar Allan Poe never got rich. Maybe the real way to say that is he never really enjoyed financial success. As I mentioned, he worked as a literary critic and that's what, at the time, he was most known for. And and he was a vicious one at that. He hated Henry Longfellow, which <laughs> that just makes me laugh. I mean, the nerdery of it all. He had also planned to publish his own journal called The Pen that was later renamed The Stylus, but he wasn't able to complete it before he died. Now, there is a lot that we don't know about Edgar's death, but Here's a theory. On September 27, 1849, Edgar Allan Poe left Richmond, Virginia on his way home to New York, that cottage in the Bronx. He ended up in Baltimore, you know, probably connecting trains or something. On October 3rd, he was found face down in a Baltimore gutter, mumbling incoherently. The man who found Edgar in the street, his name was Joseph Walker, wrote a letter to a man named Joseph Snodgrass, a friend of Edgar's, and the letter said, Dear sir, there is a gentleman, rather worse for the wear, at Ryan's Fourth Ward Poles, who goes under the cognomen of Edgar A. Poe, and who appears in great distress, and he says he is acquainted with you, and I assure you he is in need of immediate assistance. Yours in haste, Joss W. Walker. Jo Jos Joseph. <laughs> Joss. So it kind of sounds like Edgar was in Ryan's tavern, but other reports say that he was just in the street by the store. Either way, he was talking a bunch of nonsense, you know, and he kept calling out the name Reynolds, although he didn't know anybody by that name. Also, when he was found, he wasn't wearing his own clothes because what he had on, like, didn't fit him at all which is really weird. So Dr. John Joseph Morin, the attending physician, couldn't keep his story straight. At first, he said that he had notified Edgar's family right away, but then later said that he couldn't get a hold of his family. Originally, also, he said that Edgar was brought to the hospital on October 3rd around 5 p.m. Then later, he said it was October 6th at 9 a.m. Then on October 7th at 10 a.m. or in the afternoon. This guy could not make up his mind. Well, at any rate, Edgar Allan Poe died four days later at the age of 40. Now, his exact cause of death isn't really known, but it has been speculated to have been many things. Suicide, cholera, hypoglycemia, rabies, syphilis, 
influenza or murder the victim of cooping. What, what is cooping? I'll explain. Put a pin in that because we're gonna come back to it. Well, the hospital records and his death certificate went missing. Convenient. Even his family members couldn't get their hands on a copy. Also, he was buried one day after he died, which does a couple of things. First, you know, it prevents his family and fiance of being able to say their goodbyes. Only eight people attended his funeral, including the reverend and the reporter. The funeral lasted about three minutes because the reverend thought it was gonna rain. I can't get rained on. Also, a hasty funeral would be hmm, very useful if somebody was trying to cover up the cause of death. Let's get back to cooping. Political cooping is basically election fraud. It's that thing where a person would get grabbed off the street and forced to vote over and over and over. They would make them put on different disguises or just, you know, get them really drunk or beat the shit out of them. Oftentimes the chief of elections would be in on it, you know, quietly watching and pretending to not see it happening. If you've seen Gangs of New York, you've seen cooping in action. I already voted today. Cast for Monk and Tamane, by God. Twice. Twice? Only twice? You call that doing your civic duty? Come with me. I honestly didn't know that it had a name, so. I learned something too. Apparently, it was such a popular thing that it happened all the time around the time that Edgar died. Definitely would explain how he was found incoherent and wearing somebody else's clothes. Think about it. On October 9th, 1849, the day of Edgar's funeral, there was an obituary published in the New York Tribune originally penned under the alias Ludwig. It read, quote, Literary art lost one of its most brilliant but erratic stars. And then it went on and on about how Edgar was arrogant and had anger issues. Well, we now know that that little article was written by Rufus Wilmot Griswold. He was actually a rival of Edgar's. Remember that Edgar had spent most of his life as a literary critic, a, a really vicious one? <laughs> So it really wasn't a reach that Edgar had some enemies, you know? If you've ever seen the episode on uh, drunk history about Edgar Allan Poe, then you know all about good old Rufus. Well, this guy went one step further and he claimed that Edgar wanted him to be his literary executor. He even convinced Edgar's family of this. So Rufus is the literary executor and he published some of Edgar's unfinished works including his alleged autobiography. Well, it was published under an article titled Memoir of the Author, and it made Edgar just look terrible. <laughs> terrible. He was a drunk. He was always in debt. He sucked. He was awful. Forget about him. Forget about him! Aside from being pretty slanderous, the problem was that there was no other work out there to contradict this, right? No other biography, no books had been written about him, and this was reproduced so many times that that became the narrative. I mean, most people, me included, with only like a casual uh, knowledge, I guess, of Edgar Allan Poe's life, you just kind of assume that what you've heard is true. Well, 11 years after Edgar's death, his cousin had a headstone commissioned for his grave in Baltimore, Maryland. But before it could be completed, you guys get this, before it could be completed, a train derailed and crashed directly into the monument, destroying it. The universe was like, now. Nah. 30 years later, a teacher in her speech class raised the funds to get a replacement headstone for Edgar's grave. His casket was moved to the front of the cemetery where it sits with his Aunt Maria and his wife, Virginia. But you guys, when they were moving his casket, it literally fell apart, shattered. Was this Edgar's ghost asking to be left alone? There are many places in Edgar's life that people say are haunted. Although, you know, one of them is not that cemetery. The cottage where he lived with his grandma, aunt, and cousins um, in Baltimore is now the Edgar Allan Poe House and Museum. Reportedly haunted AF. More than one person has reported that in the upstairs room where the kids slept, the window just basically came out of the frame and landed right there on the floor all by itself. Many visitors have also reported feeling taps on their shoulders from nobody. Edgar's favorite tavern in Baltimore, Maryland. It's called um, the Horse You Came In On Saloon. It's the last place he visited 
before he died. By the way, the horse is the only bar in Maryland to have existed before and after Prohibition, and it's America's oldest continually operated saloon. And there's fallout all over my face. Many people have seen the ghost of Edgar walking down the street toward the bar, and for years, the owners would leave out a glass of cognac, Edgar's favorite drink. And overnight, the cognac would disappear. Sometimes also glasses would just get thrown on the floor. They think probably because they no longer serve cognac. There's also a legend in the bar to not question whether or not he's actually present because he will pull the bar stool out from under you. Could just be drunk. I don't know. In the office upstairs, the drawers will open and close by themselves and the attic door will creak open by itself. There's also mysterious orbs and things that appear in pictures taken by the bar area. They also say to be prepared to see someone else's reflection when you look in the mirror over the bar. <gasps> There's also an Edgar Allan Poe Museum in Richmond, Virginia, also claimed to be haunted, which I have questions. Like how many places can one ghost be at one time? I don't know, I'm not a ghost. Anyway, that particular museum has a lot of artifacts and memorabilia from the time that he spent in Virginia. Maybe he's just like really attached to these objects and is just reaching out to them from the beyond. This house is also reportedly haunted by two young blonde haired children. They only show up in pictures and they are thought to be the last owner's children. In Poe Park in the Bronx, New York, um, there's the Edgar Allan Poe Cottage his former home. This is where his wife Virginia died and the last place that Poe wrote. His writing desk is still there where he would sit and write with his cat, Katerina, perched on his shoulder. Katerina, adorable. Well, surprise, surprise, people claim that this place is haunted too. Visitors there claim to see the ghost of Edgar Allan Poe himself walking around. There are reports of like very cold or very hot areas in the house. Also, at least in this instance, psychics have claimed to also see Virginia, but you know, this is where she died, so that tracks. Now this is really cool. So starting in 1948, an annual tradition began in Baltimore. Person dressed in black with a wide brimmed hat and a white scarf appeared at Edgar Allan Poe's grave and he would pour himself a glass of cognac and raise a toast to Edgar's memory. And then he would leave the rest of the bottle of cognac and sometimes a note and three red roses. This person's identity was never revealed, but they were nicknamed the Poe Toaster. Well, the original toaster, sounds like it's a kitchen appliance. Well, the original toaster died, but the tradition was passed down to his son for a time. Now, people have been trying for years to identify who this person is. No luck. Eventually, that person stopped coming around in about 2010, ending a 75 year streak. What do we want? Do we want dark or green? In 2015, the Maryland Historical Society revived the tradition, although it's kind of ruined by the touristy performance of it all, but it's still really nice to continue honoring a tradition that's sincere and hopefully it continues. Hmm, do I wanna put on contacts? Maybe I do. I literally just took this wig out of the bag, so it looks like shit. Finishing touches. This wig is kind of whack, but you know what? This is what we're getting today, okay? This is my Beetlejuice glam revisited, I guess. Is it my hair straight up hanging out of the wig? Yep, sure is. And this is a just a quick, fun thing to put together. Cannot stop fussing with this wig. Yeah, so this isn't necessarily a costume, but it is like vibes, you know? And you could recreate this yourself if you want to. Kinda look like Aegon Targaryen. <laughs> Big yikes. Well, that is the story of Edgar Allan Poe. All right, so everything that's still available that I use today will be linked down in the description box, including this cool Beetlejuice shirt. Yes, I realize that uh, Beetlejuice and Beetlejuice Glam has nothing to do with Edgar Allan Poe, but you know what? This is what I'm doing today. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed the spooky stories and we're gonna get back on track with regular crimes, trimes, starting next week, I think. Thank you so much for hanging out today and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this one, kind of, sort of, <laughs> then make sure that you subscribe to this channel before you leave today. I upload new videos here on YouTube every week and you can follow me on most of the other socials as well. I hope you have a fun and safe Halloween and I will catch you next time in the next video. Bye!
What am I doing? Why am I recording this? No, 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 no. Well, I hope you th <sighs> Exit, e exit it. <laughs> Where's my tiny blending brush? Her name is not Elizabeth. <laughs> so make sure that you sub <laughs> Shut up. Wow, this looks terrible. Whatever else, <sighs> stupid. This smells like Play-Doh. I, shh.